Hey everybody, this is Dr. William Clark here for Leadership Conversations. This is the show where we talk about leadership according to the world that matters to you. Wanted to quickly come on and talk about engaging in worthwhile conversations. And I think this is a topic uh, worth talking about because uh, for those of you who are watching and you're looking to mature your leadership and develop your leadership to the next phase or the next level that you're targeting, uh, you have to begin to think about the conversations you allow yourself to engage in. Um, You know, there are uh, rules that are unwritten that um, govern relationships at the workplace when you're a frontline staff. And typically what you notice uh, with frontline staff is that they try to really uh, befriend as many people as possible. And you also notice there are cliques uh, in the frontline staff uh, environments. And this does not mean the stuff doesn't exist at the senior level because it certainly does. But it seems to play itself out uh, in a way that uh, tends to hinder one if they're looking to advance, if they're not careful. And so you got to be mindful of the fact that one, there are going to be cliques on on the frontline or in middle management. And two, uh, the conversations you engage in because of the relationships and the friendships you develop tend to not necessarily lead to the advancement of your thinking, your philosophy, your operation, um, the way you do things. And so you have to think about that as you continue to develop along the journey of leadership. And ultimately, if you're looking to really uh, climb the ladder and um, turn your leadership into an appointment to a position of significant authority, engaging in worthwhile conversations means a lot. And this means taking a step back from God gossiping so much, uh, taking a step back from water cooler conversations that tend to be gossipy and lacking substance, and really engaging in things that are focused on the work at hand uh, as your place of employment. And so I wanted to provide five thoughts around how and why to engage in worthwhile conversations. Number one, uh, the first thing I have here in terms of how to engage in worthwhile conversations. This is on you now. You got to read, 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 and read, uh, read a bunch of information to be honest with you. Obviously, you want to read information relevant to your career, to your industry, to uh, the place where you work, the competitors that are producing information. Um, if there are national, if there's national movement, international movement uh, relative to your work, you got to consume that information that's relative to work. And uh, I would also encourage you to consume, obviously, leadership material that can advance your skill set in leading and managing folks. Uh, you're uh, consume information that will help you become more strategic and creative and innovative in your workspace. But I also encourage you to consume and read information that is culturally relevant to where you live or where you're trying to move to. And what I mean by that, uh, back in the day, and this this is still happening, back in the day, you know, my parents, they consumed a lot of the local news. And that was a big thing in my household growing up. We would turn on the local news channel uh, and we would watch the local news literally for an hour and a half because they were in 30 minute segments and we would go back to back to back. And that was literally the cultural consumption platform and mechanism for families back then. Today, uh, cultural consumption is much more uh, varied than what it is, what it was. And so you can watch local news, you can watch national news, you can watch celebrity news, you can watch uh, news relative to communities you follow, whether it's uh, uh, ethnicity or, or race related, maybe it's gender related, um, or maybe you're into, you know, um, goat yoga and you want to follow the news relative to that. Consuming that information is going to be helpful to your advancement as leaders, as a leader and engaging in worthwhile conversations. Why? Because, one, if you're going to consume work-related information, you're going to become inherently smarter anyway. If you're going to consume information relative to leadership and strategy development and innovation, you're going to become better at your job anyway. But the cultural content allows um, for you to develop the, the dynamic element of your personality that makes you you. Perhaps you're into goat yoga. And you like to read up and participate in stuff like that. I know for me, I'm into road biking. I'm into bowling. uh, I'm into podcasting, obviously. And so things that are related to that, technology, um, communications, I consume that type of information. It makes me a more dynamic individual when I'm having conversations with people. And I'm talking about elements of my personality that aren't necessarily work-related. And and for you as a leader, you're not going to become less human the more uh, responsibility you take on. People are going to want to know who you are, what you're into 
But the other thing that I've observed uh, when it comes to cultural consumption and the things you do outside of work, uh, it impacts your work, actually. Your hobbies, uh, your activities, it makes you a more well-rounded person. In some cases, your hobbies can influence your work. It can cause you to be uh, more at peace at your job. It can cause you to be more creative at your job. It can cause you uh, to introduce concepts and ideas that your job never considered and would have never considered except that you offered that idea because you were studying goat yoga one day and realized, oh my goodness, we can do such and such and such and such at work and gain this customer. And so you got to read, read, read so that you can become more dynamic. Number two, know what you know and share what you know. Uh, people believe that when you become a doctor, you earn a PhD, that you know everything. Um, hate to break it to you, you don't. <laughs> when you graduate, what you know for sure is that you know very little uh, and you know a lot about very little. And you're, you you leave with specialized knowledge. Um, and that's the reality of becoming a doctor. You, you, you're very specialized in what you know. And when engaging in conversations, people aren't necessarily interested in talking to a know-it-all. People are interested in talking, talking to you about what you know and listening to what you know and engaging in conversations where you're able to listen to what they know and meet in the middle to talk about things neither one of you know anything about, but just want to talk about and pontificate about and um, just banter about, just to bounce ideas off of to see what each other feels about a certain situation. And it's okay to not know something. It's okay to say, this is not my area of expertise, but this is what I think. This is what I feel. And it, it opens the door to dynamic conversations yet again. So know what you know and share what you know. Number three, appreciate what you don't know. Listen and learn. Again, as I mentioned, engaging in worthwhile conversations is not just about you sharing, but it's about the process of you listening and consuming information from the other party who is willing to share, read, 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 and share what they know. Now it's your turn to listen. It's your turn to uh, learn and it's your turn to embrace what this person is sharing with you. You know, you'll, you, if you're not used to this, what you'll discover is that when you're listening to people share what they know and share their expertise and share their stories about goat yoga, um, you get to know somebody differently in a way you never knew before, or you get to make a new friend that you didn't realize you had so much in common with, but you would never know that if you didn't take the time to listen. Listening is equally important within the mechanism of communication. And it can't just be a one-way street when it comes to communication. It can't just be you talking and pushing out content without you taking a moment to cease your sharing and to open up your gates to receive what is being said. This is why there's difficulty in the workplace, within personal relationships, within business relationships, within your leadership. If you're, if, if you're not taking the time to listen, and to appreciate what somebody else has to share with you and to consume the information they're trying to give you, which provides context and insight into their personality, their behavior, their way of thinking, then you will never, ever improve your leadership. And you will never, ever engage in worthwhile relationships, let alone worthwhile communication that makes a difference in your leadership. Number four. Engaging in worthwhile relationships requires the exchange of ideas and openly, dis openly discussing information with no judgment. I am willing to share with the hopes that you're listening without judging me because I know what I know, but I also know what I don't know. And I'm willing to share what I don't know with the hope that you don't judge me. The caveat is it's my job to not judge you as well. And as I said earlier, there are some conversations where people are talking about things they have opinions about that may not be based in fact. And as a result, they're sharing that for the sake of a healthy, open, adult conversation with the idea that no one leaves the conversation judging the other person. That takes time to learn and to master. Some people struggle with judgment. Some people struggle with um thinking less of other people 
intentionally and on a regular basis. Some struggle with op- being open-minded. Some struggle with engaging in a healthy debate and, and leaving the conversation without taking it personal. This is a part of engaging in worthwhile conversations. This is a part of what it means to be a leader in a conversation. And sometimes being a leader in a conversation means I don't know the answer. What do you think? Tell me what you think, and maybe I'll figure out where I stand in the middle of you sharing. So don't be afraid to exchange ideas and discuss openly, but just don't judge. Number five, uh, engaging worthwhile conversations requires you to enhance your current knowledge with what you've learned and to continue to grow. You may have a specialized knowledge, but that doesn't mean you stop learning. It doesn't mean you stop um, growing. It doesn't mean you stop advancing your skills. No. What that means is I know what I know, but I also know I don't know as much as I could know. There are people all over the world who understand leadership way better than I do. And my ability to grow as a leadership expert is based upon my ability to not only share and teach what I know, but also to consume information from other experts who know what I don't know. And I won't know what I don't know unless I'm listening. And so you have to open yourself up to the possibility that you don't know everything. And then two, allow others to invest and pour into you. There are times where as a leader, you are not the one teaching and influencing. There are times you're the person sitting on a sideline, yes, with the title of CEO, COO, or whatever O you want to throw in there. And you're not leading an activity or a project. You're learning from your your peers or your team members or people that are looking up to you. And here's the secret. It's okay that you're not leading that activity. It's okay that you're learning. You are developing on an ongoing basis as a result of you closing your mouth and listening and learning. When you put those five steps in in context of what it takes to engage in worthwhile conversations, I think you'll notice a difference in the way people decide keyword decide to engage with you along the journey of your leadership and their growth hope you find this helpful go ahead subscribe and like this podcast on facebook instagram tv twitter and youtube and don't forget to subscribe to us utilizing your favorite podcasting platform this is dr william clark for leadership conversations and we'll see you in the next show